Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a less famous discovery of an exoplanet that might be terrestrial or even habitable that is not TRAPPIST-1. I'm just showing you TRAPPIST-1 because this was the biggest discovery of 2017. Anyway, let's talk about this unusual exoplanet and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So, the discoveries of 2017 were actually quite a plenty. There were a lot of really cool exoplanets discovered, but some of them were overshadowed by big discoveries like TRAPPIST-1, ROS-128b, and a few other ones I mentioned on the channel. Today we're talking about one such object, and I'm going to recreate it in Universe Sandbox and tell you what we've actually missed back in November of 2017. And let's start uh, by creating the actual star first. This is Kepler-1652. It's actually um, about half the size and the mass of our own sun, so it's technically a red dwarf. And we're going to do this right now by changing the mass and creating the star that looks more like Kepler-1652. The temperature here is about um, 36 to 39 uh, degrees Kelvin. The mass is about 423 Jupiters or 0.4 masses of Sun. And the radius, uh, radius is also a little bit smaller, about half the size of our Sun. Or actually a little bit closer to about 38% of our own Sun. Now around this star that's located in Cygnus constellation at a distance of about 820 light years away from us lies an object known as Kepler 1652b. Yet another very interesting rocky planet or potentially rocky planet that might actually have liquid water in it. Now this object is in the habitable zone so I'm actually going to enable the habitable zone here. You'll see that it's the green band here and we're going to place a randomly generated rocky object and redefine some of its parameters to make it a little bit more realistic, starting with the orbit and also with the rotation here. So we're going to change the rotation and orbit to 38 days because that specifies that this object takes about 38 days to orbit around its home star, but also um, tells us that this object is very, very likely um, tidally locked to its star. So as you can see, it's actually in the hotter region of the habitable region, habitable zone, which also suggests that it might be, um, depending on the atmosphere, a lot hotter than we can survive on. Now, Venus is actually in a similar region around our own home star, but also has uh, or possesses very, very thick atmosphere. So if the atmosphere here is thick, you would expect an, a planet that's similar to Venus. Now let's change the way it looks and the way it um, is as well. We're going to start by changing its mass, making it a little bit uh, more realistic. Although we don't really exactly know its mass, we do know its radius. We found this object by looking at its passage in front of its star. And because of this, we we're able to see its radius. So we know it's about 1.6 radii of Earth. So we're going to change it right here making it about 60% larger than Earth. But the scientists who found this um, particular planet also mentioned that the density might be higher as well. So here, the actual density might be about 9.9, .9, which is almost a double of what it is on Earth, making this object significantly more massive than Earth. Now, this is a speculation and we don't really exactly know what the density and the mass is, but we know the radius is higher. So this could either be um, a gas like cold Neptune, or in this case, I guess, hot Neptune. In other words, a gas giant or not a giant, but gas planet. But it's more likely that this is a rocky planet with the um, average temperature without any atmosphere of about 16 degrees Celsius. But if there is any atmosphere, you'll notice that as soon as I add anything here, it's probably going to become a little bit warmer. The temperature here will actually decrease quite a lot. Now, we do think that this might also be a water world. So if this is a water world, there probably is going to be a lot of liquid water on the surface. But 
Um, this is only a speculation based on what we observe in our own solar system with Neptune and Uranus. Because we don't have these super Earths in our own solar system, except for potentially planet uh, 9 that we haven't found yet, this is something that we can't really even imagine because we don't really know of any similar examples here. Now, what's interesting is that the scientists behind the paper also specified that Earth's similarity here is actually pretty high. It's about 82%. And here, um, the Earth's similarity is about 76 Now, I think that's maybe because we didn't include the magnetosphere. Because this is such a massive and very, very dense planet, the magnetosphere here would very, very likely be pretty high. Maybe even um, a lot higher than Earth, but obviously not as high as... Uh, Jupiter or even Saturn, but we would expect it to be significantly stronger than Earth. And because of this, maybe just maybe the Earth similarity will also go up, although in this case it actually didn't. And as you can see, the life likelihood here, as it stands, is about 39%. That's actually pretty, uh, pretty significant. So because we discovered this planet, um, we think that this potentially might be yet another one of those worlds we need to take a look at a little bit closer because not only is it an habitable zone and Earth-like, or I guess super Earth-like, it also has a relatively high um, Earth similarity index and at the same time life likelihood as well. Now for humans, this planet might not be particularly comfortable. For one, because the gravity here is going to be pretty high. The surface gravity here is somewhat similar to that on surface of Jupiter. It's 28 meters per second squared. That's, that's over three times higher than on Earth. In other words, jumping here would probably result in a broken ankle and maybe even a few broken bones. On the other hand, maybe just maybe this uh, particular object um, is kind of comfortable for some other species that are okay with high gravity. Now, one thing that stops this planet from potentially being habitable, or I guess two things, is that um, it might be tidally locked to its star. In other words, there might be only one surface exposed to the uh, star's luminosity and star's energy at all times, and one side being completely hidden from it. So it's really that um, twilight area in the middle that might actually be comfortable for humans to survive on, or for really any life. The dark side would be too cold and too dark, the bright side would be too um, full of highly radioactive particles coming from the red dwarf Kepler-1652. And um, unless it has a really strong atmosphere and um, atmosphere capable of mixing the temperature across the entire planet, on top of having strong magnetosphere, this is probably going to be not a world that we're going to find a lot of life on. Although you never know, because chances are some of the extremophiles we have on Earth would actually find this planet quite comfortable to live on. And I guess the other limitation to habitability of this planet is the star itself. It really depends on how active the star is. It's only about 3.8 billion years old, meaning that it is actually relatively young in terms of red dwarfs. Young red dwarfs have a tendency to flare up quite a lot. Let's see if we can make it flare right now. A flare in red dwarf is not a comfortable place to live on. As a matter of fact, uh, a red dwarf that flares a lot will probably strip the planet of everything. Now, there's no flares happening right now, but that's most, mostly because I made this from scratch. It wasn't really a red dwarf to begin with. This would be um, similar to our own sun that doesn't really flare as much. This, however, in reality, will probably flare a lot. It's a young red dwarf. It's a red dwarf still full of energy. So you would expect this to produce a lot of dangerous radiation. And because of this, it might actually end up stripping a lot of atmosphere and potentially water from Kepler-1652b. But all of these, once again, are speculations, and we need to look at it at this planet a lot more, study it in a lot more detail, and actually go and discover if there are similar objects out there, maybe even closer to our solar system, that we can use as a potential comparison with Kepler-1652b. So this was a pretty cool object discovered in 2017. However, it was overshadowed by a lot of other discoveries, including Ross 128b, which is a lot closer to our own home planet. This one is a little bit farther away. Anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. 
Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you still haven't. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. Now let's just go ahead and explode the star to see what happens to Kepler 1652b if there is a supernova nearby. <laughs>